Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm out on another walk. And this time I'm up on Kithurst Hill um, in the, the car park. You can actually drive up Kithurst Hill. It's in West Sussex, close to Storrington, which is just a little to my west. And then if you were to go to the uh, east, you'd come to Amberley and Arundel. So down here on the South Downs for another South Downs exploration. Beyond you can just about see um, the Weald going north and in the other direction, south, you've got the sun and also you've got a few meandering hills and then you'll get down to the coast. So today I'm up on the South Downs because I'm looking for urn fields. Now you may ask yourself, what the hell is an urn field? Well, I'm talking about Iron Age urn fields. These are the cremated remains of humans from the Iron Age period that were placed into pots, um, pots that have been turned on a potter's wheel and then these pots have been turned into the ground with a number of relics or should I say personal belongings to whoever it was that was uh, cremated. And uh, the South Downs all along here, it's hard to believe really that this uh, whole landscape was peppered, um, well more than peppered really, it was um, occupied by peoples from Neolithic times to the Bronze Age times to Iron Age times. Um, and they lived up here on the South Downs. Now, I've got a hat on, I've got layers on, I've got my scarf on, I haven't got my gloves on yet, but they'll be going on shortly, and it's cold. I don't know how they survived up here in such freezing temperatures, but survive they did and thrive in fact. I'm heading to Rackham Hill where there is a particularly interesting, if I can find it, urn field. Even on a cold wintry day like today, uh, at the very end of November now, up here on the exposed South Downs, there it's dry, there's blue sky and it's very rewarding and invigorating to get out and walk. But the thing to think about when you do do that is you are walking through this, um, this very ancient ground. A lot of people aren't that interested, I think, in the Neolithic times and the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. And I think that's because there's so little to see. There's no written evidence. People can't relate to it as easily. Now, it was often believed that when the Saxons came over at the end of the, in the fifth century after the Romans had sort of left us abandoned, it was really the Saxons that did all the forestry clearing up on the downs and into the Weald. But that now is believed to be wrong um, and actually they didn't have time to do that because forests are incredibly difficult to get rid of. What um, is actually what happened is the clearance from very, very ancient times after the, uh, the Ice Age of the woodland, the clearance happened by the Neolithic people with their axes of flint and their various tools out of uh, the mined stones that they were using, the, the flint which they mined from sort of 30 feet down below uh, places like Sisbury were perfect for felling trees and uh, clearing and grubbing the countryside. So when the Romans came, actually a lot of what we see now, the openness and the farming areas, were already in existence back then. There's always something interesting on the downs 
um, when I go out for a walk and, and often something unusual and unexpected. For example, just off the track here is a wood and in the wood there's this strange thing on legs, sort of box, corrugated metal around. Just thought I'd just take a little stroll up to it and see what I could make of it. I don't know whether it's a hide or a, a, some sort of water tank, perhaps. But uh, this wood, and I'm just going to have a quick look, look around the wood. You see, going back to what I just was saying about the, the woodland being here for ancient times, coppicing was going on even back in the Iron Age. See this old tree here? Um, that, that old stump there would probably have been a be beautiful tree and then at some point it looks like rather than being cut it may have just fallen down. And what happens when a tree falls down is the big foliage on the top, the canopy, it makes space so that light can come through once it's fallen down and then things on the ground like like these little trees here that are slowly growing whatever they are will take its place it's sort of nature's way of doing its own uh, regeneration I just want to quickly go down this bit here because you'll see more of these stumps now a, a number of them may have fallen down during 1987 in the great hurricane that we had you can see another one there but these old woods you see here this 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 is an example of a coppice stool you can see um, as I go round you can see how the the trunk isn't just one tree going up but it looks like there's other bits that have been lopped off and here again another example of a coppice tree you can see the, the younger bits going up from the main trunk. I'm not going to claim by any means that I'm an authority and I may have got my facts wrong but I'm fascinated by ancient woodlands and um, wood management now and I'm starting to read and learn a bit more about it so I can present more stories and more videos. Um, it, it just helps to put the history of the landscape. It's, it's another piece of the jigsaw into the uh, historic nature of everything. So that's one of the reasons why I'm fascinated by it. I'm just coming off the main path, the South Downs Way, because in front of me I've just spotted this little earthwork and I may be completely wrong here but I, it's a permissible path to come and have a look at it but it looks to me like a very typical burial mound and it's got a dip in it at the top which again it is revealing that um, it's been explored or exploited by the 19th 18th and 19th century burial hunters or the barrow diggers as they were known all along the downs it's littered with tumulus and tumuli and um, these barrows from the Neolithic times from the Bronze Age times they are um, reminder that this place was very busy very populated with people and those of importance perhaps the chieftains um, would have had their burial grounds like this and then inside uh, would have been an urn as I said before with the cremated remains of a human and sometimes those urns were decorated and sometimes they were more plain but uh, that's fascinating and it's great to to actually see them in existence because with the uh, intensive farming uh, the plowing of the fields up here that very often they just disappear and I think that's sacrilege because it's so much it's the only real evidence of uh, you know of these people so important to see right I'm almost at Rackham Hill I've got a kissing gate to go through here as ever um, and we'll get back on the main path and we'll go back and try and get to the urn field I'm not sure I've never been here so I don't know what's what there is to see so this is what's exciting 
and coming up now to the top of uh, Rackham Hill overlooking I can just about see down below me the um, the River Arran and then in front of me will be where on the hill uh, well uh, sort of on the hill um, Arundel Amberley is sort of over there I might be able to pick out Arun, um, Amberley Castle but on my left is the trig point haha <laughs> always good to get to the trig point you know you're there then because it's marked on the OS map and uh, people can be very pleased with themselves then on the right hand side looking northwest you've got the the meandering river Aran in the distance there that little bit of strip of silver and the whole amazing view to the north and here in this corner coming up to me is where the urn field is again you're just not going to see very much I mean if I had a drone it would be perfect because you could fly over the area um, it's a bit too windy for a drone but you can see some earthworks here which is what I've come to see and the uh, the urn field and more tumuli um, on the landscape this I'm not sure if it's a listed protected site it bloody well should be excuse my English you can see there on the horizon there's um, another mound uh, this tumuli again somebody uh, a few a few thousand years ago who knows in the in the Iron Age so we're, we're talking 750 uh, BC at least um, buried there and again it looks like there's a dip in the top of the mound where the uh, the enthusiastic barrow diggers went pilfering and pillaging for their spoils um, and and you know it's a good thing or bad thing it depends who who it was and what their techniques were but um, there we go so I've made it again not a lot to see I'm afraid but a most invigorating walk with the winter coming on I'm not sure how many more walks we're going to be able to get we may have to become more studio based um, but all the time that it's bright and it's uh, photographic and photogenic then I will do my best to get out thanks so much for watching I have got my woolly hat on to keep my head warm I know people have been worried about that until we talk again uh, see each other on another walk thanks for watching and bye for now